In this video, I'll create an awesome procedural hexagonal grid, similar to a carbon nanotube, which can be customized to whatever shape we need. And stay till the end to see how I made this simple animation by modifying the same setup. Let's get started. Open up Blender. Make sure you're using version 3.1 or above. Delete everything from the scene by pressing A, X, and Enter. Expand the bottom window and change it to Geometry Node Editor. Add a Bezier curve. You can add any object to start working with geometry nodes. But here, we might need this curve to build custom shapes later. Let's get rid of this group input. We'll add it back later. For easy understanding, I will add a basic curve line to start with. Connect it. We can see it better in the side view. Now, I'm going to transform this curve line into a cylinder. How do we do that? This curve line can be converted to a mesh by adding a curve to mesh node and inputting a curve circle as a profile curve. Now, we have this beautiful cylinder that we can control its radius, resolution, and height. If we go into the wireframe mode, there are no segments in between. That is because our curve line consists of only two points. We need to make grids on the surface. If we add an resample curve on the curve line node, we get control of how many segments we need on the cylinder. You probably wonder why we are building a square grid. We can convert this grid to a hexagonal honeycomb-like pattern by using just two magical spells. Combining one triangulate node and a dual mesh node can convert this to our desired pattern. But the hexagons are a little skewed, which means the hexagons are out of shape. We need to make it look like this. Now we have three issues to solve. One is the skewing. And if we change the length, the density is not constant. And the same goes for the radius. We can fix this by making the segments a function of the corresponding dimensions. Starting with the radius, we need to increase the radius value as a function of the segments, in this case, as a multiplier. I'm going to bring back our group input. Plug the resolution into the empty socket of the group input, so that we can expose the radius value to the modifier stack. Add a math node and set it to divide by a factor of 50. Look at that. The density remains constant, and we can easily control that from the modifier panel. Let's do the same thing for the height as well. For that, I'm going to add a curve length node. Add a math node and set it into multiply add. Because the resample value considers an extra point value that we need to normalize by adding 1 to the multiplier value. Multiply by 10 and offset by 1. Connect it. Change the radius value to 10. Change the height to 1. Now, look at this. The density is independent of dimensions. There is no more stretching. Now, we need to fix the tilt. To visualize it better, I'm going to make this into an actual wireframe. This is our current mesh. And a mesh to curve and curve to mesh node. Here we can assign a profile curve and connect a curve circle. Change the radius to 0 0.005. Also, by changing viewport display settings, we can see it better. Change the values to a rounded figure. To fix the twist, add a spline parameter node. And a set curve tilt node, redirect the curve. Connect length value to tilt with a math multiply node. See here, we can control the tilt. A value of pi gives our desired result. We have a perfect hexagon pattern now, which is updating with height, because we use length value from the spline parameter node. But it's not updating with our radius. To fix this, we need to make the curve tilt as a function of the radius value. I will take this radial resolution value and connect it to the tilt value with a math node. Set it to divide and make the numerator 10. OK, we're done with that. Look at this, we have control over the radius and length without messing up the hexagon grid. This is all procedural. Even if we connect the actual geometry of a Bezier curve, we'll retain the structure. 
and we can customize it to make our desired shape. It works for any curve, delete the Bezier curve. We can even draw the shape using the Draw Curve tool. This looks like a carbon nanotube. And you can use this to create scientific illustrations and models. Let's quickly add some carbon atoms to it to make it look better. Get rid of this curve and add the Bezier curve back. Plug the curve line back in. How do we add some spheres on the joins to represent carbon atoms? This is the output of the dual mesh node. We'll get our result if we can instance the spheres onto the vertices. Add an instance on points node. Add an icosphere of resolution 3 and scale it down. Join them both. That looks about right. I'm going to shade the spheres smooth by adding a set shade smooth node. Give them both different materials using a set material node. I'm speeding up my shading process here. Let's make it a little more interesting by retaining some hexagon faces. Add Delete Geometry node. Set to Faces. And connect a random value node set to Boolean. We can change the probability value to control the density of faces we want to keep. Combine them both. Suppose if we want to scale the faces down, simply adding a scale elements node will not work. For that I'm going to use a split edges node. That looks about right. Again I'm playing with some more shading settings. To make the motion graphics you saw initially, add a not curve object and assign this geometry node set up to that. Make sure that you zeroed out the depth value of the curve. Duplicate the same curve and get rid of the geometry nodes modifier. This duplicate curve will be the path of our camera movement. Add a camera and parent it to an empty, which has a follow path constraint to move the camera along the curve. With tweaking some other settings and speed, this is the final result. I hope you like this video. Please stay subscribed for more Blender and Geometry Node related videos. Check in the description for project files.